Hello guys, and welcome to Barking Mad Tech, an extremely low effort and extremely low budget tech channel dedicated to bringing you only the best in bad tech content. Today we're going to be building a gaming PC, and as you may have gleaned from the title of this video, it's going to be Minitex and made out of used hardware. So without further ado, let's take a look at the hardware we're going to be using. For our processor, we will be using this, the Core i5-7400. It's a 4-core, four 4-threaded four processor with a base clock of 3GHz and a boost of 3.5GHz. As I said in the previous video, these older quad cores without hyperthreading have started to struggle a bit in modern games, but for the right pricing it still offer up some pretty decent value. Oh, and it will be cooled by this Intel stock cooler because I have like a hundred of them. Our motherboard will be this, the MSI B250i Gaming Pro S, uh, AC, sorry. Uh, it's a pretty nice motherboard for what it is, it's got all the features you'd expect from a Minitex motherboard in the modern era, with uh, built-in Wi-Fi, AC Wi-Fi to be specific, and uh, Bluetooth, it's got an RGB header, uh, four SATA ports, yeah, might even have two RGB headers actually. Anyway, uh, yeah, no overclocking. Uh, but it's you know it's a B2 uh, since it's a B250 chipset, but we're using a locked uh, i5 anyway, so it doesn't matter one bit. Oh, it's also got an M.2 slot here on the back, which is pretty nice actually. Uh, for our RAM, we're going to be using this single 8 gig stick of Corsair Venus LPX. Uh, I would have liked to have dual channel. This was not feasible this time around. Um, M16 gigs was also unfortunately not. Uh, feasible this time around either. Uh, it's 2400 megahertz, nothing special about this at all actually. For our storage we will be using this Intel 545S 256 gig SSD. It's a SATA 6 gigabit in interface which means it performs basically the same as any other SATA 6 gigabit SSD uh, in the modern era. Um, uh, you know, provided, you know, it has DRAM cached, so it performs basically the same as any other DRAM cached uh, SSD. And for backup, we'll be using this Samsung 500 gig hard drive, because why not? Our graphics processing will actually not be handled by the GTX 980 Ti SU Strix, you may recognize from, or remember, sorry, from the previous video. Instead, we'll be using this GTX 1060 6GB. Um, I believe it's an ASUS Dual OC model, so it's got a pretty decent cooler, uh, no backpack, unfortunately, and you know, the, the 1066 is still a pretty decent card for 1080p gaming. Now, you're probably expecting me to use the Cooler Master Elite 120 from the previous video for our case, but a few days ago uh, I went uh, online and looked through some local deal hunting websites and I found a really good deal for this the Fractal Design Core 500. So I picked that up. It's just it's a nicer case overall, it's about the same size, uh, it comes with 240mm fans, uh, it's got space for all the hardware we're going to put in there, and it's just a bit more open of a case to work in, uh, so I just went ahead and got the, oh and it's got much better ventilation at the front, so I just went ahead and picked that up. And for the power supply I'm not using the Integra M 550 watt. Uh, I thought I was going to, but after a while I just decided no, I'm going to save that for a future project, coming soon, TM. <laughs> and instead I opted for this, the Cooler Master G650M. Uh, which, you know, it's not the best power supply in all honesty, but it will power this build perfectly fine indeed. So now it's a few hours later, the computer is built. Uh, overall I'd say the building process was pretty smooth. I did run into a bit of a snafu where I realized the system, um, the motherboard rather, only has one system fan header. Um, uh, and there were two fans, but that was you know, easily remedied by just getting a, a Y splitter for the fans. Uh, I also ended up switching out the Samsung drive uh, in favor of a uh, WD Blue 500 gig, just because the unfortunately the Samsung drive was just broken. Uh, 
But yeah, as I said, the build process was pretty smooth beyond all that, and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Uh, you know, there's no window or anything on the case, so I can't really look inside. But uh, yeah, it's pretty good, it's nice and compact. It runs pretty damn quiet too. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, I expect this uh, computer to be able to do uh, 1080p 60fps gaming at medium to high in the newest games and uh, probably, you know, in older AAA titles that I'm talking, which are 3 and so on, Dragon Age Inquisition uh, and so forth, I, it should be able to do ultra 60fps at 1080p all day long. Um, but uh, before we head into the benchmarks, let's tally up the costs of uh, the system here. So the processor, motherboard and RAM each costs me uh, about 333 Swedish crowns. So we'll run that, round that down and call it 330 Swedish crowns. Um, uh, our storage I didn't actually pay for, uh, but from uh, doing research and looking around and finding various used SSDs and hard drives, I'm going to value the SSD at 250 Swedish crowns and the hard drive at 100 Swedish crowns, uh, just for simplicity. Uh, our graphics card I didn't pay for either, in all honesty, but looking around it seems that in Sweden right now, used 1066 gigs go for anywhere between 900 and 1200 Swedish crowns, so we'll meet sort of in the middle and call it 1000. Uh, again, the case I did actually pay for. Uh, 300 Swedish crowns to be exact, considering its condition, the fact that it comes with an extra fan compared to uh, when you buy it new. Uh, I think that's a pretty good deal. Now, power supply again, I did not pay for, but it seems that used power supplies of similar quality and wattage go for anywhere between 250 and 350 Swedish crowns, so we'll call it 300 there as well. That leaves us with a total of 2,940 Swedish crowns, uh, or just under 310 US dollars, uh, or maybe it's just over, either way, well, you'll know. <laughs> Um, over 310 uh, USD, which I, which for a mini ITX uh, PC with these uh, specs, I don't think is a bad deal at all. So with all that said, let's uh, let's head into the benchmarks. So in Red Dead Redemption 2, I ran through the built-in benchmark uh, twice. Uh, once with my own sort of optimized settings, uh, which is basically honestly just. Uh, hardware unboxed, optimized game settings with uh, a few things tweaked, but what it ends up being is just a mixture of uh, ultra high and medium settings, uh, and it's what I found to be a good balance between performance and uh, visuals, and it's the one I use when I just play the game in my own time. Uh, and as you can see, it's, it seems perfectly playable. Uh, there's some slight stuttering sometimes, and I uh, I can't help but uh, but um, uh, acknowledge that that's just part of having a, co a quad core without hyper threading in uh, in this era of uh, games so uh, yeah uh, so we ended up uh, with these settings we ended up with a minimum FPS of 16 uh, average of 45 and a max of 58 uh, or, which I'd classify as perfectly playable for this uh, sort of uh, game so for the second round of RDR2 benchmarking uh, I went with digital foundries Xbox One X equivalent settings uh, because it involves turning down a few settings uh, here and there so I want to see what sort of performance improvement we can get from doing that and I do notice quite a few visual downgrades from uh, going from my settings uh, to uh, this Xbox One X equivalent setup and there is a bit of a performance difference uh, but not that large and certainly not enough to be worth it at least in my opinion. Uh, with that said, it's still perfectly playable, still looks pretty damn nice, this game is just absolutely beautiful. Uh, but with, with this, these settings we ended up with a minimum of 15 FPS, which is 1 FPS lower than uh, my settings, uh, which is a bit odd, and uh, an average of 48 and a max of 61. So again, yeah, not a huge difference, certainly not enough for me to think it's uh, worth it. In Assassin's Creed Odyssey, we're at a mixture of high and medium settings, and as you can see, the performance is not 
very good, which is, you know, not unexpected for a Ubisoft game. Uh, nonetheless, I think it's playable, but I did notice here a pretty big CPU bottleneck. You know, the CPU would be pinned at 100% uh, all the time, while the graphics card would only go to about 50-65%. to uh, You know, it's a Ubisoft game, so it's going to be poorly optimised. Nonetheless, I think it does show that... You know, these quad cores without hyper-threading are just not cutting it necessarily for high-end AAA gaming uh, anymore. That said, you know, it's, it's a, it's a third-person RPG. There's no Twitch action going on in this game. So I think these settings are ultimately fairly playable. So in uh, Total War Three Kingdoms, there's actually three built-in benchmarks. Battle, Campaign and Dynasty Mode. And as far as I could tell, Dynasty Mode and Battle are both pretty much the same. <laughs> Which uh, seems to be corroborated by the fact that they both uh, gave the same numbers. Uh, that said, they were all played at 1080p ultra high settings uh, in Battle. Uh, you, we got a, min a minimum FPS of 50, an average of 61 and a max of 69. Uh, in campaign, we got a minimum of 40, an average of 50, and a max of 57. And in dynasty mode, we got the exact same as in battle. Uh, yeah, I think, once again, we're seeing uh, a CPU bottleneck, uh, but I don't think it's as severe. And, you know, it's a strategy game, you know, it's not frame rate, while, you know, nice to have, obviously, it's not that important. So this is perfectly playable, even if it is a bit disappointing. And for our final game we have Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. And we're playing on high settings at 1080p and as you can probably see there's some stuttering going on which is uh, kind of in line with the trend we're seeing today. And that's obviously because of the CPU bottleneck and primarily just a, a pinned CPU that quad core just being stretched to its absolute limits. Uh, uh, yeah, but we got a minimum of 41, an average of 59 FPS, and a max of 62. Uh, honestly, in all honesty, I'd call this pretty playable, and it's, uh, it's a fun game, it's a good looking game. Uh, all the same, that stuttering does kind of uh, hamper the experience by a fair amount. Uh, and you know, it's in line with the trend we're seeing with these modern games, where this, this process just can't quite keep up. Older games should definitely be fine. However, so there we have it. A uh, bit of a disappointing showing, I think, but you know, it's as I said, those uh, quad core i5s are really not doing so nowadays. With that said, everything was playable, and I think that for some older games like The Witcher 3 and Dragon Age Inquisition and such, as I mentioned before, this should be able to do Ultra 60 FPS 1080p all day long without issues. Uh, yeah. I guess that's it for me for now. Keep an eye out for future videos. Uh, peace out.